study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2.15 Hello everyone, peace, love, and grace of Christ Jesus be with all of you. In this study, we're going to look at salvation security in Christ Jesus. Now, if you're doubting your salvation, you're not going to be confident. And you're not going to go around telling people how to get saved, right? Because false teaching shatters a person's confidence by convincing them that salvation comes from places like works and good works and, and having to keep your salvation. Because a Christian that's too busy keeping the laws won't have time to be out there planting seeds of salvation, especially if they're not confident in their own salvation. Rightly dividing God's word is like a bulletproof vest protecting you from false teaching, from evil religions, from enemies, their, their attacks. And it's, a sore, it's your sword of truth. God's word is the, is the sword of truth. It's your weapon, dear saints. So we're going to be covering a few topics here. We're going to look at how to get saved, how to know you're saved, how to stay saved, and we're going to look at, is grace a license to sin? That's a big one today. We're being accused uh, you know, of thinking that because we believe in grace, then that means we can just go on living in sin and so on, and nothing could be further from the truth. And also we're going to look at believing in Jesus versus believing on Jesus, and the difference in, two, in those two words is huge. Now, one thing I've noticed over time is that the saints who know how the Bible is written, that know how to rightly divide, that understand dispensations, they don't seem to have a problem with being secure in their salvation. They're always, always secure. And people who don't know how the Bible is written don't rightly divide. They don't understand dispensations. You know, they believe in things like traditions and they use new versions of the Bible most, if not all of them, are insecure about their salvation. Most are confused, and many are spiritually depressed. Now, that's, that's what I've noticed, and I deal with a lot of people on a daily basis. So, you know, I, I can't tell you how devastating it is to read emails from people who are confused and depressed and frustrated and, you know, about to give up on salvation altogether. And it is. It's extremely sad. So let's start with the word dispensations, which, by the way, is not found in the NIV Bible. The NIV is the most used Bible outside of the King James Version. And if everyone's using the NIV and the word dispensation is not in it, then there can be some confusion over that. Paul uses the word dispensation to explain that God used different administrations throughout time to deal with mankind. Paul is clear what dispensations are and what dispensations are not. If we look at 1 Corinthians 9.17 For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward, but if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. Now look at the context there. Paul used the word dispensation to point out he points out the fact that this certain gospel committed to him was unique it was separate and it was different than the others Ephesians 1:10, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ both which are in heaven and which are on earth even in him in that verse the word dispensation is once again used to point out the fact that the fullness of times is a unique period of time or a, a unique administration. In Ephesians 3, 2, If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you, word. That can't be more obvious. Again, Paul says dispensation of grace. Then pointing out the fact that it was revealed to him by God himself. Once more, pointing to the gospel of grace as being unique unto the Apostle Paul, he's talking about the gospel of grace that our Lord Jesus revealed to him. In Colossians 1.25, we 
whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations but now is made manifest to his saints again the word dispensation in context used by our apostle Paul here separates the mystery gospel of grace from the other gospels it makes it clear that it was given to him Paul by God himself so when false teachers tell you that dispensations is something new you know they're either confused or they're lying the more you know about God's Word the less opportunity the enemy has to deceive you and the Word of God is your weapon it's the sword of truth all right now moving on over to another very important subject is that in our dispensation for today the gospel of grace we believe on Jesus Christ believing on Jesus <clears throat> means we believe everything that he's done the death burial and resurrection so we believe on Jesus Christ in our program today and in the prophetic program for the Jews under the dispensation of law and kingdom they had to believe in Jesus Christ they had to believe that Jesus Christ is or was their prophesied Messiah now let me give you an example of believing in versus believing on using scripture okay now here Paul is speaking in Romans 3 verse 29 is he the God of the Jews only is he not also of the Gentiles yes of the Gentiles also seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith notice that first Paul uses the word by for the circumcision and the uncircumcision he uses the word through okay by by faith here signifies the Jews having to believe in Jesus Christ as their Messiah Jesus is the subject here through faith signifies the body of Christ the gospel of grace the mystery revealed to Paul believing on Jesus Christ Jesus and his actions is the subject there okay for us today now under the gospel of grace our gospel for today we're saved in Christ Jesus by faith without works we're see we're sealed by the Holy Spirit the moment we believe on Jesus Christ and in order to believe on Jesus Christ you first have to see or hear the gospel of salvation and that's in 1st Corinthians 15 1 through 4 moreover brethren I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you now here Paul is speaking to believers he's reminding them of what he had talked to them earlier on when he gave them the gospel when he was discussing the gospel with them which also ye have received and wherein ye stand by which also ye are saved you see that they were saved by this gospel if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you unless ye have believed in vain for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures and we're saved by faith on Jesus Christ through faith without the laws without works look at Romans 4 5 but to him that worketh not but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly his faith is counted for righteousness even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works saying blessed are they who whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sins Galatians 2 16 knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law but by the faith of Jesus Christ even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified 
by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified Galatians 3:11 but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God it is evident for the just shall live by faith 2 Corinthians 5:21 for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him Titus 3 5 not by works of righteousness which we have done but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost notice how the jailer gets saved in the book of Acts in Acts 16 we're going to read 25 through 40 and at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loosed and the keeper of the prison awakening out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open he drew out his sword and would have killed himself supposing that the prisoners had been fled but Paul cried with a loud voice saying do thyself no harm for we are all here then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said sirs what must I do to be saved and they said believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house and they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house the most used Bible in this country the NIV it says believe in the Lord Jesus Christ instead of believe on the Lord Jesus Christ notice what the jailer realized that he, he first he needed he realized that he needed to change the path that he was on and he made a 180 and asked Paul how to get saved his heart was genuine and his motive was right his intentions were true it was the opposite from believing in vain here okay and notice in verse 31 on Jesus Christ and then we're told what the process is on how to believe on Jesus they spake the word of the Lord to them, right? The gospel of death, burial, and resurrection. So what about the accusation that grace teaching is a license to sin? Well, let me show you why grace is far from being a license to sin. In 2 Corinthians 5.10, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done whether it be good or bad for we must all appear we all have this appointment with our precious Lord Jesus and both the good things and the bad things will be brought forth at our judgment so is grace a license to sin absolutely not we're accountable under grace for what we do here on earth as the ambassadors for our Heavenly Father nowhere in the King James Bible does it say grace is a license to sin not one place 1st Corinthians 3 verse 12 now if any man build upon this foundation gold silver precious stones wood hay stubble every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is if any man's work abide which he hath built there upon he shall receive a reward if any man's work shall be burned he shall suffer loss but he himself shall be saved yet so as by fire in Romans 14 but why dost thou judge thy brother or why dost thou set at naught thy brother for we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ for it is written as I live saith the Lord every knee 
shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God so then every one of us shall give account of himself to God preaching salvation by grace through faith alone without consequences is another gospel it's not the same gospel that Paul teaches here in his 13 books of Romans through Philemon Paul gives us a serious warning to everyone who, who, who's teaching another gospel and we see that in Galatians Galatians 1 verse 7 which is not another here Paul's talking about a gospel okay <clears throat> but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you that then that which we have preached unto you let him be accursed as we said before so say I now again if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received let him be accursed so look at this word here in verse 9 again if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received right Look back at 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received. Here is the gospel, <clears throat> right? This is the same gospel that's being spoken about here in Galatians 1, in verse 9, and when Paul says, If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, well, we see the gospel that was received in 1 Corinthians 15 1 through 4 it's extremely important this is the gospel that saves here we again we see Paul speaking to saved members of the body of Christ he's reminding them of the gospel that they were saved by right again moreover brethren I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you which also ye have received and wherein ye stand and then we go down to verse, all the way down to verse 3. We see the first part of that gospel. I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day. That is the gospel. We see the death, burial, and resurrection. Believing on Christ Jesus. Paul warns about adding even traditions of men to the gospel of grace we see that in Colossians 2 8 beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of men after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ tradition is time and time again trying to creep into the pure gospel of grace to pervert it to place it back under the laws of Moses and we see this with all the 2,000 plus denominations out there in the world today. The new versions of the Bible, they change small words, small phrases that you wouldn't think could mean a big deal in salvation. But let me, let me show you how it can be a very big deal and lead you astray if you're not using the King James Version Bible. Look at Romans 3.22. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of God, Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe for there is no difference notice what it said by faith of Jesus Christ it's speaking of his faith here not our faith but his faith that's the context of that verse notice in a newer version even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who believe for there is no difference Okay, the context is completely thrown out of balance in that verse. It doesn't mean the same thing as the verse in the King James Version Bible. In this new version, we see faith in Jesus Christ. It makes it look like it's our faith here. But in actuality, in the King James Version Bible, it's not talking about our faith. It's talking about the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. Right? Notice, the faith of Jesus is the righteousness of God in that verse. But the, the new version says that, our faith in Christ make or Christ Jesus makes God righteous and it, it's that's blasphemy it's not our faith that makes him righteous it's his faith that 
through His faith, His righteousness that we're righteous. The new version makes it look like it's because we believe in God, then that makes Him righteous, right? You see how they twist that? The newer versions make an effort to remove our Lord's faith. Again, in Galatians 3.22, But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. Again, the context of that verse is the faith of Jesus Christ. His faith might be given to them that believe. You see that? And then we look down in a new version. But the scripture hath confined all under sin that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to them to those who believe. They switched it again. Again, our Lord's faith is the subject in the King James Version Bible is by his faith that what he, he would do for us would be the final payment for all sin. Not our faith, but his faith. And again, we see the part we play here salvation was was made complete first by our lord's faith his faithfulness and then by our belief in what he did for us in ephesians 3:12 in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him the new version in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him all right we see a change again in philippians 3 9 and be found in him not having mine own righteousness which is of the law but that which is through the faith of christ the righteousness which is of god by faith the new version and be found in him not having my own righteousness which is from the law but that which is through faith in christ the righteousness which is from God by faith. Once again, they remove the faith of Jesus Christ and put all the responsibility on mankind. And the new version says, it's all your faith that counts to be saved. You see, so how secure would your salvation be if it was all about your faith and not Jesus's faith? It wouldn't be too secure. Now you're probably thinking, you know, Lonnie, why are you harping so much on this of and in Jesus and on and this well there's a very good reason why and let me show you go to Romans 3 with me in Romans 3 verse 20 therefore by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in his sight for by the law is the knowledge of sin but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested being witnessed by the law and the prophets even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all upon, and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say, at this time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Now look close at verse 25 with me. Here's why it's important to understand the difference between faith of God versus faith in God. Okay. In verse 25, <clears throat> whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. Okay, whose faith is being spoken about here in context? Is it our faith in his blood or is it God's faith in his blood? According to this passage, if we read it right, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. The context here is God having faith in his son's blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past. Now, there's a lot going on with this with this verse here. Now, first of all, let me tell you that there are some people out there 
false teachers that will read this and not read it correctly and they'll say look all you need to do is have faith in his blood to be saved well there's a couple problems with that first of all if you tell someone that doesn't believe that all they got to do is have faith in Jesus's blood that doesn't tell them anything about the death burial or resurrection all it tells them is to have faith in Jesus's blood okay they're not gonna know how to do that and they're gonna be misled wait they're gonna be thrown way off as far as knowing what salvation truly is so there are people out there that use this verse to say you have to have faith in his blood well that's not what this verse is saying at all first of all the gospel is not there our gospel that we received remember 1 Corinthians 15 1 through 4 Paul says the which ye have received keep in mind remember he reminds them well what was it it was death burial and resurrection so our gospel is not here in verse 25 Romans 3 25 this is speaking about God's faith in his son's blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past look at that again the remission of sins that are past again that has nothing to do with the body of Christ the word remission here has nothing to do with the forgiveness of sins the complete forgiveness of sins right in, in the total forgiveness of all our sins past present and future this has nothing to do with eternal life everlasting life complete security and salvation remission it means the word remission means a temporary forgiveness of sins it is temporary it's not complete it is not forever it is not total remission just like be having a remission of cancer it means that it has stopped momentarily it is a temporary thing this is speaking about the nation of Israel the Jews remission of sins that are past right well it's not just our sin the past sins that we've been forgiven when Christ died for us was buried and rose again our gospel he paid for our past present and future sins he paid all of our sins so nothing about this verse here in Romans 325 has anything remotely even close to being our gospel for today in the body of Christ and you really have to look at that verse again you have to look at all of the Bible all 66 books and you need to study it study it look closely at it every period every semicolon every colon every every mark in the Bible means something and it's extremely important you look at it and notice these things like I said there's false teachers out there saying that the gospel is found in Romans 3 23 through 26 and in 25 they say you have to have faith in his blood that's not talking about us God is had had faith in the blood of his son Christ Jesus to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past and there's an indication it's talking about the nation of Israel it is talking about the kingdom program and not today's dispensation of grace we're seeing the dispensation of the kingdom there all right now that's why it's important to understand in verses of or you know all the other words like I said the faith of God versus the faith in God and so on it's not our faith that keeps us saved it's the faith of Jesus Christ that keeps us saved hundred percent of the time because his faith never wavers his faith is perfect from day to day and our faith does waver from day to day also there's something else that the new versions of the Bible what they teach and they teach a works based salvation let me show you a couple verses 1 Corinthians 1 18 for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness but unto us which are saved present tense it is the power of God the new version for the message of the cross is fullness to those who are perishing but to us who are being saved 
right? It is the power of God. Here we're seeing a definition of work, saved versus being saved. Again, the new version makes it look like salvation is a process of good works. That is a lie. And really, you know, the newer versions, that's what the major religions are teaching today. They're all using the new versions. And it's very dangerous and it can confuse you if you're not careful. In 2 Corinthians 2.15 For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ in them that are saved and in them that perish. The new version for we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved. You see that? A works based salvation and among those who are perishing. Again, saved versus being saved works salvation hiding the fact that salvation is a one-time event it happens and it's there forever and making it look like salvation is a process over time is what's taught in the newer versions and it's a works based denomination so no wonder you know they all use the new versions of the bible and make excuses to stay away from the king james version bible so Another thing, second, once we do that, that we're, we're, we believe the very moment we're saved, at a, it's a one-time event, <clears throat> and we're sealed. We're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Then it's His faith that keeps us sealed. It keeps us saved. It keeps us righteous. He covers us with His righteousness. Another reason why you can't lose salvation is because the moment you believe on Jesus Christ, you're baptized with the Holy Spirit. And you're sealed by God at that very moment by the Holy Spirit. There is only one baptism today. Baptism means to be sealed with the Holy Spirit, right? That's our baptism today. One baptism and it is the Holy Spirit. So we're sealed in Christ Jesus. Second, uh, Second Timothy 2.19 Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. In 2 Corinthians 1.22 who hath also sealed us and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. In Ephesians 4.30 And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Nowhere in Paul's 13 books does Paul talk about being unsealed or resealed by the Holy Spirit. It's a one time event. In fact, Paul tells us something even more that seals the deal. Look at what Paul says in Romans 11. And if you're into memorizing Bible verses, then memorize this one because it's important. In Romans 11, verse 29, For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. That's huge. Are without repentance. Repentance means to change your mind. And in here in verse 29, Paul tells us that God does not give you the gift of salvation and then ask for it back later on. It's a gift without repentance. It's yours to keep forever. It's a free gift. Another perfect example that you cannot lose salvation. Ask yourself a couple questions. Do you feel guilty about sin? Do you hunger to know more about God? Do you have a disdain for evil in the world? Do you hunger to fellowship with God in prayer? Do you try to obey God's word? Do you look forward to being with Jesus Christ one day? Do you notice a decreased pattern of sin in your life? Do you love other Christians? Do you experience uh, answered prayer? Have you suffered maybe rejection because of your faith? Can you discern God's truth over the world's lies? Now understand, you know, these things don't save you or keep you saved, 
But those questions are just a list of things that the majority of Christians will notice in their lives because the Holy Spirit will produce fruit in your life. Whether you like it or not, things will change. These are just some of those areas that you'll notice these changes for over time. If you can see some of those things in your life, then it's a good indicator that the Holy Spirit is working through you only after you've been, you know, you believed on Jesus Christ, which includes the gospel of grace, the death, burial, resurrection. That's what Ephesians 2.10 is all about. We all know Ephesians 2.8, but the verse 10 that comes after it is also very important. Ephesians 2.8, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And verse 10, For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them and you see that verse 10 created in Christ Jesus that means after you're saved then good works will be manifesting in your life through the Holy Spirit you'll be changed you are a new creature in Christ Jesus this verse isn't saying you need to do good works to keep your salvation that would be twisting the verse out of context. And they all do that. Those that teach work salvation, they all twist that verse, okay? False religions and traditions of men. You become a new creature in Christ Jesus the moment you're sealed with his Holy Spirit. In 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. If you're made a new creature, then how can you return back to your old creature? You're made into a new being. You're sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. You might have heard a preacher say something like, you know, invite Christ into your heart or accept Christ as your personal Savior or even pray this prayer after me. These are gospels outside of God's truth and they cause confusion and worst of all they cause false salvation right if you read 1 Corinthians 15 1 through 4 over and over and over again until you finally get it and when you do you'll suddenly experience a joy a peace a comfort that you most likely never experienced before and furthermore salvation is not something that can be lost because you battle with sins every day and you think that you can lose your salvation. Jesus' death solved the sin problem forever. The death, burial, and resurrection. Good works have no effect on your salvation because it's Jesus Christ's works that's sufficient before God the Father. Not your works. It's His righteousness. It's His faithfulness. Listen, dear saint, believing that you can commit some sin and lose your salvation is to believe that your sin is greater than Christ's work on the cross and the power of the resurrection. In closing, you know, I can read passages from the King James Version Bible about why you cannot lose your salvation till I'm blue in the face. But if tomorrow you go right back, right back, to the same denominational traditional church to get another dose of confusion that I can't help you. You need to first make a stand to stick to right division. The very first thing you should do as newly saved a, a newly saved member in the body of Christ is learn how the Bible is written. Learn right division. I'll leave a link in the first comment that will take you to what I call a boot camp for understanding how the Bible is written and I highly recommend this study to you. It's very important. I've shared this boot camp with many people and they've all come back to me thanking me and sharing, you know, for sharing it with them. They've all they're all overjoyed because now they can understand. They all tell me that they finally understand God's word for the first time in their lives. So take advantage of it, please. I'll leave a link in the first comment for everyone. All right? The second thing, you need to stick to the King James Version Bible. We've just seen example after example after example after example where the newer versions will trick you and, to, and confuse you and keep you 
from not having joy and you know just please just use the King James Version Bible it's so important stick to the truth I pray for anyone out there who was doubting about their security in Christ Jesus now at least saw a, you know how to get saved what saves us how to know you're saved how to stay saved you know it's all Christ his righteousness his faithfulness that keeps you saved you're sealed by the Holy Spirit you're made a new creature the difference between believing in Jesus versus believing on Jesus believing in Jesus was is for the kingdom the dispensation of the kingdom for the nation of Israel they had to believe who Jesus was as their Messiah believing on Jesus is our program for today it is the gospel of grace believing on Jesus Christ involves knowing what he did the jailer asked how must I be saved and they said believe on Jesus Christ and they explained the gospel to him death burial and resurrection right so in our next video, in our next study, we're going to look at, we're going to revisit the bride, who the bride is, who the bride is not. And we're going to finally, hopefully, lay that topic to rest by rightly dividing. All right. Peace, grace, and love in Christ Jesus be with all of you saints. Thanks for studying with me. And Lord willing, I'll see you on the next study.